This is the Palazzo del Bargello. It is the oldest building in Florence. Built in 1255 to house the Capitano del Popolo, essentially the mayor of Florence. In 1261, it became the office of the city council. In 1574, it became the house of the chief of police and a prison, which is why it is called the Bargello. Executions were constantly carried out in this very courtyard from then until they were abolished by the Grand Duke Peter Leopold in 1786. It remained the headquarters of the police until 1859 when they finally converted the building into the museum that it is today. What's really cool about this place is we're gonna see some of the world's most priceless art. Stuff by Michelangelo, Donatello, Sandro Botticelli, and just some of the best, best artwork from the Renaissance period, period. <laughs> So let's go check it out. This statue is Juno and the Two Peacocks by Bartolomeo Amanati. He built it in 1511 through 1512. The statue of Juno and the two peacocks represents both the goddess and the duchess Eleonora, whose emblem was the peacock. This group of statues formed part of the fountain for the Sala Grande, as we will see next. This is the Fountain for the Sala Grande by Bartolomeo Amanati, who claimed to drink hammers and chisels with his mother's milk. Cosimo Medici commissioned this fountain to celebrate the bringing of running water to Florence, and it was intended to symbolize the good government of the Medici. It was originally meant to sit in the Hall of the 500 in the Palazzo Vecchio, but wound up in the Boboli Gardens, where it was taken apart and disbanded throughout the garden.
The Statue of Oceanus by Giambologna, built in 1576. The Fountain of Oceanus is Giambologna's most important fountain and is located in the Boboli Gardens in the backyard of the Pitti Palace. The original statue of Oceanus was brought here to the Bargello. Oceanus is the Greek titan god of all the Earth's fresh waters. Cosimo de Medici by Vincenzo Dante. It was sculpted 1568 through 1572. The statue was commissioned by Cosimo I de Medici. It portrays Cosimo in the same pose as Michelangelo's famous statue of Bacchus that we will see here shortly. The David Apollo by Michelangelo Bunarati, sculpted 1530-1532, through 1532. ordered by Baccio Valori, the commissary of the pontifical troops, who was put to death by the order of Cosimo de' Medici for treason while Michelangelo was sculpting this statue. Due to the execution, Michelangelo never finished this piece. It depicts Apollo in the act of pulling an arrow from his quiver or as David standing over the head of Goliath.
The Bust of Brutus by Michelangelo Buonarroti, sculpted 1539 1540. The only known bust by Michelangelo. He carved it for Cardinal Niccolo Ridolfi. Michelangelo used a similar ancient Roman bust of Emperor Caracalla as a muse. Brutus was one of the murderers of Julius Caesar, and he was named in Caesar's last words, E2 Brute, which means, you too, Brutus. Michelangelo's intention for this statue was to symbolize freedom from tyranny. Hey, what's up, travelers? This is Gary Holt from Exodus and formerly from Slayer, and I'm here to tell you to smash that subscribe button for Tasting Travel. Slayer, do it now. Tasting Travel. Check it out. Later. Subscribe. All the best. Bye-bye. Adam and Eve by Baccio Bandinelli, sculpted in 1551. A very underrated sculptor, overshadowed by Michelangelo throughout his life and hated by most of his contemporaries. This statue of Adam and Eve were commissioned for the Florence Cathedral but never made it there due to their graphic nature. Another example of Bandinelli's work is this bust of Cosimo de' Medici that he did in 1543 and 1544. Bandinelli was loyal to the Medici and this led to many commissions including this bust of Cosimo as the Grand Duke of Tuscany. This is The Pity Tondo by Michelangelo Buonarotti, sculpted 1504-1505. It was commissioned by Bartolomeo Pitti. This relief's round format is typical of domestic art of the time, and it depicts Mary with baby Jesus and Saint John the Baptist. Mary sits on a square boulder alongside the playing Jesus. Legend has it that Michelangelo carved this piece due to his rival Leonardo da Vinci's return to Florence and he carved it because he wanted to show da Vinci that he was the better of the two. Here is the Crucifix Galeno, one of two wooden crucifixes attributed to Michelangelo, though this is hotly contested. This beautiful sculpture is carved from lime wood. Here we have the Bacchus by Michelangelo Buonarroti, sculpted between 1496 and 1497 for Cardinal Raffaele Riario. Bacchus is a Greek god also known as Dionysus. The Romans knew him as Liber Peter. He is the god of fruitfulness, vegetation, wine, and ecstasy. You will notice at the back of his left leg a sculpture of Cupid. This part is a forgery. It was supposed to be an actual statue from ancient times, but Michelangelo carved it and then artificially aged it by smearing it with feces and burying it. It's the only piece that Michelangelo forged and he did it when he was 21 years old.
here we have the bronze bust of Michelangelo Buonarroti by his nephew Leonardo Buonarroti for the family tomb. Here is the bronze bust of Cosimo de' Medici by Benvenuto Cellini, 1548. This intense and beautiful sculpture resembles an imperial painting and Cosimo's eyes will burn through your soul. This statue is the Flying Mercury by Gian Bologna, sculpted in 1580. Gian Bologna was the most important sculptor in Florence after Michelangelo. Gian Bologna was a court sculptor to the Medici and was forbidden to leave Florence. Gian Bologna also has another really, really important piece of art in Bologna. It is the Fountain of Neptune and you can see it in this video linked up to the left. Mercury is balanced on one foot, held up by the wind, shooting out of the mouth of the, of the wind god Zephyr. One arm is pointed to the heavens. If you've enjoyed this video of the Bargello National Museum in Florence, Italy, be sure to subscribe because this was only part one and part two is coming soon. You don't want to miss it.